Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to try to. I'm going to try not to be so jargony and and technical. Um, but as a show of, show of hands, how many people are implementing for the first time, or just early on? Okay. Good. So this hopefully this will be really you know come just in time for you guys. Um, and for those that have been in for a while, whether you can implement them right away or it's just something to think about in general, I think you'll uh, have a good time with this. So. Um, so yeah, as Ben said, I did two implementations in two years, uh, one with Webster University. Um, that was around between 2012, we went live in June of 2013. And then within a month or two, I <laughs> got an offer to go to Maryville University, who was going to Canvas. And so then a year later, we went live um, at Maryville. So we've been, so I repeated the year twice. To, and uh, full implementation, talking to faculty, getting it all the uh, hierarchy set up and all this stuff. And I'm so happy that I've been a year away from that, so. <laughs> But uh, so last year, I was really stoked because I knew I was done. We were live, and I presented here about uh, a lot of these little tools that I built using the API. And out of that whole session, there were these two slides that garnered the most, um, the most interest. And um, so I decided to try to go a little bit more in depth about them. And actually, you know, it, it really is the bedrock of, you know, the implementation, the, the integration between this and the SIS. Um, it really helps a lot, so hopefully. So I'm going to give you a condensed overview. This is a condensed overview of Maryville's uh, hierarchy, sub-account hierarchy. Um, we have four layers of sub-accounts between the root account and the courses. So what we call the zone, and then we go down to school, and then at, we're at the prefix level, and then we're at the course number level. And then underneath that are the courses. Um, at, at Webster, we actually had an extra layer in there between the school and the prefix because uh, we had departments represented in the hierarchy. Um, but uh, we had two different, so I've done this with two different SISs, um, two different structures, and so far it's working really well. Um, and we, for, as a point of reference, we created our own integration in both instances, and so I worked with some really great uh, enterprise guys that you know take care of our SIS to get to get to what we're doing today. So one of the things I want to you know kind of show or take a take a look at for later is uh, the relationship between the the structure and the SIS course ID. So for the people who are new, you will come to know the SIS course ID a lot, and I'm gonna I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it, like I said, it is the key to our integration. So why would you want to do this? Well, so your desktop, <laughs> my wife's desktop during the semester is, is cringeworthy. So, but you don't want your, <laughs> it's really hard to find things, right? It's really hard to do anything with any, you know, when it's all just jumped in one big vat. So that's, you know, one reason to uh, kind of smooth this out. So, but there are other things. There are um, more granular uh, administration, right? Take advantage of the cascading effect of, of the settings. So anything that's set at a higher level cascades down to that what's lower. Really nice. Um, one thing that we, we use it for is the LTI deployment. So if we're going to pilot something for, a small, for a one school, or perhaps one school is the only one that bought um, a third-party LTI tool, it's really easy to just go and plug in that LTI at that part in the, in the hierarchy, and it's just theirs, and it's no one else's. Um, also, special admin roles, special uh, permissions. So we have uh, lead faculty who have wider access without having to be enrolled in every course, or we have student services that have a certain amount of, uh, certain kind of privileges that, you know, they need to be able to go almost anywhere and not have to be bugged with uh, notifications from thousands of courses, um, things like that. Uh, reporting and sharing. So say you wanted to pull grade distribution for the School of Business. Easy peasy, just go down and grab, it, grab that, those, uh, those reports at that, at that level. 
um, sharing of outcomes and rubrics, question banks. They can all be compartmentalized and, uh, and shared in that fashion. Um, and my, my favorite part, the thing I use a lot, are, is the customization. So the custom CSS and JavaScript files, um, we, you know, we will do custom interfaces for schools or colleges and you know, sometimes it's prefix based. Um, certain resources are released, um, certain tools are hidden uh, by default, and so we're able to do that. Um, mostly, you know, the point is to do, be able to accommodate and be as flexible as possible without convoluting it or, or customizing or you know, compromising it for another unit. So how do we do it? How do you start and how do you plan? So this is a, kind of a screenshot and I have a shortened link. It's, it's just the documentation to the API and these are the SIS import files. They're CSV files and you will probably get very, very familiar with them if, you haven't, if you're not already. Um, and what I'm talking about here is not just the SIS course ID, but the relationship between the account ID, the course ID, and, actual, and the section ID. They all kind of come through this same flow. So what I did is I started, I, took a, I just took a course, any course, um, in this case Business 101, we looked at the course listing, I knew it was in the, in the summer 15 term, and I broke it up, um, BUS 101, Section 1M, Term 15.SU. I broke it up um, with characters that I could use later, so when I'm scripting and I want to, you know, search for uh, certain aspects of that, of that key, I can just delimit on the uh, underscore. Really easy. Um, the important thing is, Throughout the whole process, you want to try to use the specific or the official SIS designation for, say, your term or stuff like that. Don't get fancy because it'll just blow up in, at the end. I did break that rule, however, because um, at Maryville, uh, they use a slash between the year and the term, and that creates all kinds of havoc down the road. So I did change it to a dash where everything else is an underscore. Um, So, so we have our course, the beginning of our course ID, right? And all you have to do, all, all I did was uh, hit a dash SEC to be the section. So if you want, you know, the section ID is part of this. Um, super easy, straightforward. Now the first parent account, we just back up, we're just backing up uh, through that ID, right? So now it's BUS 101. We have a sub account for so every business 101 course now and into the future will be under that sub account. So if we need some longitudinal data, easy. Just go to that sub account, pull the stuff on it. If we want to just affect, you know, a certain tool and just those courses, boom, all right there. So then logically the next thing is the prefix, right? So all business courses. Um, makes it a lot easier. The nice thing, at Maryville we do tend to have our programs tend to have a, a pretty homogenous uh, prefix. Not, you know, as opposed to, well, we do have an MBA that has several different, um, different prefixes involved in that program. And that's one of those things that you want to be careful of. Um, the soft or more abstract relationships, like programs where they would share, um, you want to try to stick as close to what the course record in your SIS says. Any information that's there, use that and try to keep those, you know, soft things, figure out a different way. <laughs> um, but so once you get up to, to the prefix, you have to make a determination who, what entity owns or is responsible for the prefix. Like I said, at Maryville, we would have gone from the prefix up to the department, to the business department or the management department. We don't have it, uh, we don't have departments codified in the SIS. I mean, we do have departments, but they're not part of the course record. And so we went straight from prefix up to school or college. And so, and then what we introduced, and we, one of our choices, we went to what we call a zone. Um, now, a zone, for our purposes, is a it started out as the instructional method code, which is in the SIS. Um, 
we do ha we have online, we have blended, and we have traditional face to face. That kind of web enhanced um, goes by a million different names, and nobody's really happy with any of them. Um, but those those three are the instructional methods, and those are strictly uh, controlled by the SIS. We don't make any manual adjustments to those to those areas as far as enrollments, um, course creation, cross-listing, all of that is strictly through the uh, integration. Um, and then we do have other zones for organizations such as cohort groups, um, advising groups, um, and then we have a training area, and usually those, those two that are outside of the strict control, we are a little bit more liberal with the user, um, user permissions, and so if we have 10 advisors that whose uh, advisees kind of rotate often, you know, we allow them to enroll students in their, in their course. Whereas on the SIS, no, they will not, you know, we don't let them mess with, anybody mess with enrollments. We need it to be as cl close to a, of a reflection of the SIS data as possible. So things to watch out for. And there are a few things. Um, in my implementation, one of the things that's kind of a pain, it's not that bad, is aggregating data across zones. So if the, school of, you know, the dean of the School of Business wants to know grade distribution across the entire school, and I have to do it for online, I have to pull a separate set of reports for blended and traditional web enhanced. That could be a good thing and a bad thing because the LMS is used differently based on those LMS codes, or those uh, instructional method codes. So it could be a good thing, it could, you know, but for grade distribution, you just wanna know that, so you'll have to aggregate those together. Um, the delegating the administration, that can get pretty um, out of hand. Um, the best thing to do is to really stay away from, try to stay away from specialty roles um, that aren't, um, how do you say it, shared so program coordinators, that's, a, that's, a, that's some kind of job at Maryville. So that's a good one. Um, just specialize one instructor or one person needs just this particular role just over here, I would stay away from that. The, the best thing that I learned is to get, I, got, I became really good friends with the uh, Dean's Council. And so anytime a, an access issue came up, I'd say, hey, I need some policy guidance here. You know, let, let them, people who should be making the access rules, you know, make them, and then we just carry it out. Um, the masquerade feature, I found, you have to give it at the root. So if you have a person that you're down, down at the prefix level that needs to be able to, you know, masquerade to support, say, nursing students, um, you can't just give them masquerading the, the ability to impersonate a student or a, or a teacher at that level. You have to give that up there and then give them different stuff down here. I can go into that later if you guys ever run into that, that issue. That was uh, frustrating to figure out. Um, but tracking changes, make the changes as high up in the, in the hierarchy as you can. Because if you notice, let me see if I can go back. In the hierarchy, the higher up you are, the more static it is, right? Rarely are you going to add a new instructional method, or rarely are you going to add a new college or school. It happens, but you know. But down here, as you get to sections and cross-listing and new courses and all that stuff, it's way more dynamic. So, rather than having to make, you know, those those setting changes down, where you'll have to make them 50, 60 times. You just try to get up as high as you can. But the, the main thing is, is really take a look at um, how it works, you know, how, how your SIS is set up, and try to reflect that. Um, it comes in a lot, it comes, really comes in handy when we're doing API stuff. What I do is there's a, there's a function called the, uh, now I'm blanking on it, the uh, provisioning report, right? So it's kind of like those SIS inputs, but it also brings out the Canvas IDs and some other nice, nice stuff. I, take, I, I download those daily and I cache them on my side so that any API stuff that I write or any queries I do, 
I can do it locally and format it before I send an API call. So I can do a lot of heavy lifting before I even hit the API. And that's a lot of it's due because due to this, uh, this setup here. But it's really, it's really neat because when you read the uh, course ID or the account ID, you know exactly where it is in the, in the hierarchy. You know what term it's in, so it, you also, you're also using the terms and the term ID for that. So, you know, it's human readable as opposed to some garbled Unix ID that might be spit out of your SIS. Um, go ahead. Um, at Maryville, we're at uh, Aleutian Kylie. And at Webster, we were on, um, this is so bad I put it out of my memory. Uh, uh, it, it really didn't matter because it had been customized so much over the years that it was, it was hard to see. But um, so I tried, I, one lesson I learned last year was uh, try to leave as much room for questions as possible. Uh, so by all means, hit me with anything. Um, what happens when departments change their name or, or colleges merge and stuff like that? How do you what happens? <laughs> so the question is, what happens when names change or merge or things like that? Well, I'm sure the people that the the those caretakers of the SIS have a bigger problem than I do. <laughs> so. What I would do is I'd take their lead. I, there's, they're gonna, it's gonna be a different code. They might keep it as the same code. But the, you know, we send a, a, a feed over every 24 hours and it doesn't recreate the wheel, it just adds. But you know, whatever is in the SIS is in Canvas. We generate a course shell for every course in the catalog whether an instructor is using it or not. Um, so it's just a one for one. No, so if it, if it, so let's say the, the business school becomes business and technology and it goes from BU to, you know, BUT, right? It'll be a, now it'll be a new entity. And so that would probably be a, a dead branch, a static branch. Okay, so if a change occurs, is there a way to map the, the iterative process? So that, so that you can trace the history of it and that. Right. Um, that's a good question. I mean, since I don't delete anything on the, on the Canvas side, the provisioning report will always show a certain, you know, uh, amount that, that's there and then they'll show this new entity. Um, you, it, it, a lot of them are tied to uh, the set, the term ID, and so if you get those to pro provisioning reports down, I'm sure that there's a way you can, you know, just, you'd have to mangle it, you'd have to mangle it. yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. Do we have any, any uh, difficulty cross-listing across sub-accounts? Have not, and actually that's another, I'm glad you brought that up. One uh, benefit uh, we, I've seen from this, and this was kind of an unexpected benefit, is when the uh, section gets cross-listed, you know, sometimes you don't even know where that child, that, that one came from. But with this, if you're looking at it, you say, oh, well that's weird, why is this business course cross-listed cross with this sociology course and who, you know, oh, okay, it, you know, it originally was a business course. You know, so I have not had any problems uh, cross-listing across uh, sub-accounts, yeah. Do you have one? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You might have answered the question. You said you don't delete anything. No. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, so the question was, we don't, to clarify, we don't delete anything. Well, that was one of the big shifts that we had. Like we, uh, we came from Blackboard to, to Canvas, 
and, and D2L2 canvas. And that was one thing I clarified with the implementation. I said, so when do I get the archive? Well, you don't. So how big can it get? Mm. We don't delete anything. And I said, wow, OK. So I'm, I'm kind of running on that. <laughs> yeah, we're just running with it. Just, I think, I mean, I guess it depends on your organization. Do you have admins at each school? We have principals. Principals? But I mean, would they be admining their part? They would want to look at the data. Okay. I, just my gut reaction, I would probably go like that zone kind of feel across for each, you know, school. Because you'll have, we have middle, middle school or junior high, high school, and so they're all going to need different levels of, you know, you're going to want to turn uh, maybe chatting off totally for one, you know, part. So I, I would probably go across. Them together, you have all the as one Could also do that too. And that's the other thing. It's like just because this is the way that I did it at those two universities, it's completely up to your guys' situation. I think it's really flexible. All right. You, then you. Oh, nice. Oh, absolutely, by all means. Right in the back. Right. Right. And 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 no, and that that's the other thing and I should probably clarify too. Just because you change the you know, change that doesn't mean that you can't go back. One of the nice things about just iterating through these as a as a string is you can just go back and say, okay, here's that entire branch. You could run, run an update and just you know, implement that update. So it just depends on what your goals are. So your, as you're showing your whole uh, SIS integration, and then you do your CSV sub account distribution after integration. No. So the question is, that what's the order of operations for doing the all of this. No, we send, when, we, when I say we send an integration feed every day, I mean a full, all of the CSVs listed in the documentation, we send a copy of those. And so what happens is they generate the, the course ID first, and then we have a program that just walks backwards and said, parent ID, parent of parent, parent of parent, and just goes up. So we build the, the account CSV off of the course CSV. And you have to be careful to, to send the parent ahead of the child because then there's no parent. There's, you know. So, okay, five minutes. Go ahead. We have a lot of iterative on our program weekly. So, in that case, in this hierarchy, would you recommend some sort of iterative? I think that that, I mean, I think that's a good idea. Um, that's, that's really rough. I'll, again, it kind of gets into the whole programs where people are sharing prefixes, and that's a really tough, I've, I've beat my head against the wall trying to figure out how to accommodate, you know, because that's where a lot of the action is, is at the program level, and sharing that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes it just wasn't, wasn't feasible to do. But interdisciplinary, if, they, if you can get um, a one-to-one -one or one-to-many ownership of things, yeah, I would do that.
Okay, so the question is about batch, batch sending. And okay, and just to clarify, when I say batch, I don't mean like that snapshot where if you don't send it, it gets deleted. I mean, we just send incrementals, and then once a week we do kind of take a snapshot and put it in, but we never delete anything. Um, the errors, I haven't built a very robust error reporting that comes back from the feed, but you can go into the account import, and you can see a list if there were errors, and then you could always query back and get those. Uh, most of the errors we've seen are students that don't exist yet. Uh, for some reason, we're, <laughs> like, like the user is either been deleted or they, maybe they changed their name or, or something fishy in that area. But, so, but I think that's all the time we have. But if you guys have any, any questions or want to reach out for any particulars, I'm on the community. Um, Put it in. Thanks. <laughs>